Hey everyone, TJB Chris here with another fine computing project. Today we're doing a non-Tandy project. In the past I did this Altair 8800 kit machine that I assembled, but I didn't actually video the assembly. I just kind of did an overview of it after I got it built. So in this time, I got myself a PyDP11, and I'm going to do the same thing I did with the Altair, but this time I'm actually going to film the build. So you're going to get to watch a lot of high-speed soldering and stuff. So if you like that kind of thing and whatever weird music I'm going to put to it, you'll enjoy that part. Otherwise, uh, skip to the end. I'll have my usual chapters in the video so you can jump right to the part where I am done with it and go over trying it out. So without further ado, let's get this set up. It's going to be a static shot for the build, um, but I'll go through the box here first. So we have my Pi. I've already got the SD card programmed and the software installed. I'll put that there. And of course the official Raspberry Pi power supply. And now let's go into the box and see what we've got here. And uh, today, uh, no, no requisite whiskey today. We're sticking with the soft variety of beverages this day, this afternoon. And this will probably be a multi-day build. So if things start look different um, and there are weird transitions, it's just because I didn't obviously get this all done in a day. So in the box here, we have this all wrapped up. This little block of wood. Okay, so what's in here? I'm gonna try and do this one-handed. I can, and I have uh, on the website here the instructions for building it, and what should be in the kit are all here, so I'm going to use that. Um, the Arduino-based Altair kit actually came with a printed instruction manual, which I actually really kind of liked, just because it helps uh, make things a little easier here. Okay, so here we have a panel. Ooh, cool. This is the PyDP11 front panel. And here we have the board onto which we will be soldering a whole lot of stuff. And then I have part of the case, which is actually going to go off to the side for now. It's just going to sit right here on the Model 12 for the moment. Okay, this is what was throwing me off. So we have all sorts of parts and components, everything that's going to go on the board here. And we have, finally, the last few case components. So let's get these off to the side as well. You hang out on the Model 12, just like else and the back panel which also will hang out on the model 12. So there we are in unbuilt state we've got our case pieces and the backing we have the PCB itself which is where all the fun will be we've got the front panel which woohoo and we've got all the various components and pieces and everything else that kind of goes with this to put it together LEDs diodes um, which, yes, LEDs are diodes, but, you know, the ones that don't light up, I mean. And some resistors, and all the switches and things. So let's get to it. I'm going to apologize for the static nature of this. And again, if you don't really want to watch the build, use the chapters in the video description to skip ahead to the part where this is done. All right, the iron's warming up. We have our, to hold the components on for ones that won't, I usually bend out the parts for things like resistors and diodes, but for ones that I can't do that, I've got painter's tape, because it's not too sticky, and it should be easy to get on and off. Take a look at our parts. So these are all the switches. I'm going to hold off on opening this until I need to. Got the other bag.
it's time to test our board before we get to the switches according to the instructions. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I've got the power supply sitting over here, I'm going to take the Pi. I've already programmed the Pi, so I um, already installed the software that's actually step one before you do any of this. So I've got that all programmed and ready to go, and I'm just going to... The instructions recommend insulating the top of the USB ports and the NIC so you don't hit it on the board there. So I'm going to do that with just a little electrical tape just to make sure that it doesn't hit on the back of the board here. And this can always come back off, but this just gives me a little assurance that this isn't going to blow up. All right, so I have soldered the Pi, the GPIO connector right here. So we're just going to make that in connect it. I can see why you want to do that with the electrical tape. Do that in power. See, all the LEDs light up. That's because the lamp test switch is not mounted yet. Okay, good. So let's plug this in. Hope we get neither smoke nor failure. Once it boots up, all the LEDs should light up. There's all my LEDs. Excellent. And now that we have the lights all tested up and working, there are a couple more tests you can do, and I've just been informed that it is in fact dinner time, so we'll be testing that later. Okay, so we have done some of the testing off camera, but what I'm going to do here is we're now to the point where all the, the board checks out, so before we do the switches, I'm actually going to um, do the key switch header. and. The funny thing is the kit doesn't actually come with a header for the key switch, so, or at least mine didn't. So you've got to kind of roll your own. So I found this in my stock of parts. And we're just going to put this on the back of the board here. I'm going to use the soft key switch power options rather than um, powering, you know, using it to just cut power to the pie. I'm going to use it to send the sudo shutdown. And uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, solder this to the back of the board. And then I also have two Max 232 chips and a set of uh, 0.1 uh, microfarad capacitors that I'm going to solder into the 10 capacitors here so that I have a real serial port option. And this is not required, but I really want to I really want to be able to plug this thing into one of the uh, retro machines like the Model 12 or otherwise. So, uh, with that all said, let's get to it. time now. I got two Max 232s in there, the 10.1 microfarad capacitors that go with it. And so now, got the notches lined up appropriately, of course, goes without saying. Now it's time for the switches, and this comes with a template to help align and make sure I get the colors right and the toggle directions correct. <laughs> So this is where we are. We've got LEDs all on, switches, rotary, max, optional max 232s and caps. Um, all in all, I'm pretty happy with the solder job I did. I'm an amateur at this, so you know, it's not exactly what I do for a living. Got my pins on the back here for the key switch. 
here. And I have to figure out how I'm going to wire this. I think I'm going to have to cut this. And actually, let's do that now. Let's cut this and solder this on. Now that we're done with the build and all assembled, let's see what it's like to operate this thing. I'm pretty new at this and just learning, so I'm just going to boot up a couple of the images from the curated collection that comes with the software that you install before you put the thing together. So as a terminal, I'll be using my TRS-80 Model 12 with Teleterm EM installed on a floppy disk. This particular terminal, and in fact this particular machine, is really finicky about serial ports. So to fool the Model 12 into thinking there was a hardware terminal at the other end of this machine, and especially the Model 2 and 12 operating systems are really picky about making sure there's full carrier signals there, and the PIDP-11 only does the three basic lines needed for serial communication, transmit, receive, and ground. I added some additional lines to my DB25 and did some, some signal crossing so I could get that to work and I'll throw a little diagram up on the screen here and picture of, of what I wired together so I could make this work with the bigger machines. So without further ado, I'm going to lock the camera down and we're going to connect to this thing and try it out. Okay, I'm going to try and stay out of frame for this is the Pi P11 of course. I've set this up so the Pi is on Wi-Fi so you can connect it with a modern terminal SSH into it, but I also set the terminal up to be on the TTY S0 line there's a Getty running there, and it's connected directly to the back of the Model 12. So let's get this going. And I'm back. I'm back a bit so as to stay out of frame. So if I appear to be failing at typing, uh, if you watch my videos, you're used to it. Okay. The nice thing is, Teleterm comes with a whole bunch of great terminal things. I'm going to use VT102. It is the closest to the VT200. So it works well enough for this demo. All right, communications. This terminal program lies, by the way. If you turn off CD checking, it still won't actually talk to the thing, even if there's a terminal on the other end. But now that I fooled it, it doesn't really matter. So let's go in and set our parameters. I've got this set at 9600, 8, none, oops, and 1. Actually, one thing I should note is that the AGETI session uh, process on this is actually going to try three different baud rates, so I'll have to hit enter a couple of times to get its attention. And that's not it. One more time. There it is. Okay, we're in. So this is just me logging into the Raspberry Pi's Raspbian operating system, but the PDP-11 software is already running, and all I have to do is attach to its session. Fortunately, there's a shell script for this. And here we are. So as you can see, because I booted it up in the default state with none of the switches set, it boots up into this ID LED program, which just plays patterns on the LEDs. These are walking, and these are just kind of blinking. You'll notice this set's also blinking in the same kind of pattern. That makes it look kind of cool. So there's a bunch of operating systems on here, and many are a derivation of Unix, uh, 211 BSD, Unix 5, Unix 6, Unix 7, Unix System 3, and Unix System 5. Uh, either way, so let's do B BSD first. So it's 0, 1, 0, 2, which means these four switches will control it 0, 1, 0, 2. And then we push the little top address knob here, and it will reboot straight into the sim. Now this particular image is network enabled, and I did pre-configure the network. So that means some, some interesting things. And... 
we'll just hit enter for the default boot. And now I have the maintenance shell, which I'm going to control D out of. You see I have a Mac address. Now I booted this up earlier, so the tunnel already has the IP address. It doesn't matter, it's not a duplicate. Okay, so I've also created myself a user account on this. The documentation does list the standard and non-standard user accounts and root passwords and the like. So here I am. I am in. I have a nice running Unix system. Ooh, send mail. We're going to kill that. Goodbye, 94. Why? Oh, because I'm not root. Yeah, you should be root, things like that. And, okay. Okay. Now it's gone. It seems like an open send mail running on my network is a bad idea. Send mail's always been kind of a hole. Uh, I can imagine old send mail is just a... So we have a bunch of stuff running. I have uh, my INETD running, which by the way, there's an HTTP server on here that's running as an INETD process. So in a second here, we'll take a look at that by connecting to this from my Tandy4825SX. And in fact, let's just make sure that we get the IP address from this so I know what it is. It's going to be 0 0.248. So we'll keep that in mind. Um, otherwise, this is pretty much your standard Unix oh, BSD system. Assuming I can type, of course. One interesting thing is, like Xenix and the older Unixes, there's ex executable stuff in the Etsy directory. Um, I always like that. Um, but in BSD, uh, things are more what you'd expect them. You'd be more at home here than you would on some of the other Unixes, which we'll see. VI is VI. Except uh, at least there's this terminal break is escape. So. Oh my, hitting shift, there we go. So now, and you get tab completion, which is kind of a neat thing, and you get command history, um, at least in this particular shell. So let's see what else is in here. Uh, I've got the source for some source code here, and the hello.txt. Actually, is there more on this? There is more. Let's see if it knows enough about the terminal to be able to stop without. Oh, yes, it does. Excellent. And this is a read before the PyDP11, actually, in this distribution. So the steps to connect the network, actually, are right in here. Uh, to set up networking, you'll need to set up the files, and then you need to go do some stuff on the Py side. It tells you there's other additional users in there whose passwords you should probably change. And then the document route for the HTTP server is home, dub, dub, dub. So and I bet I have to be root to go there. Okay, so there's the source code to the website. So why don't we flip on over to the OS2 machine and take a look at that. So now we're here with the OS2 machine. We should be able to ping the IP address that we saw earlier. And we can. Okay, so that means we should be able to use the world's worst web browser, IBM Web Explorer, because that's what's on here. And it's too dumb to know that we're actually already connected. The world's most brain-dead web browser should be able to open this page. And we're going to try that. HTTP 160248. And there it is. There's the PyDP11 web server. And I don't know that there's a whole lot of uh, use for this, but it is really neat to be able to do. And it's fun that there's actually a network tunnel through that you can set up to be able to actually network the BSD system. So now let's go back over to the Model 12 and look at another Unix distribution. So one thing about the PyDP11 um, or any of these kinds of things is with a complex operating system like any of the Unixes, you need to shut them down, right? Okay. So we'll let this thing shut down and then once it does the emulator should, it should haul out back to the emulator prompt. And once that's done, we can flip the toggle switches back to 000 and 
push the, there we are, push the reset button, everything is stopped. So I think the next one I'm going to do is just system 5 for my last, my last part of the demo here. 1, 1, 5, sorry, 5, that's 4 and 1. Thank you, make sure I didn't flip any of those switches. Now we're going to push the uh, requisite button here. Here it comes. Now the nice thing is with a lot of these OS's, it'll tell you what you need to do to boot it. So even so, we're going to get a single user node mode type in it too. So 0 equals UNIX. Go. And we're in single user shells. So we're going to control it in 2. And now, sure the date's correct. No, I don't want to check the file systems yet. And now, I think I created an account here. I did. So now, this is really old. Um, there's going to be a lot of stuff that, that's not going to be here. So, if I, for example, oh, I don't even know what's going to pipe on this. Ooh, that's a good question. I don't know what's going to pipe on this. Um, so I'm, I was going to say, I don't think there's more here, but if I, you know, I can, yeah, I don't even know if there's a host, yeah, it's not even there anyway, let's see what we have, and again, as, as is common with Unixes of the Sera, there's a lot of executable stuff right here in the Etsy directory, along with other files, just message of the day going by, password file, of course, RC, term cap, I wonder what's in term cap, uh, well, we'll check that later. Uh, what else we got? Let's see what else is here. Oops. Sitting far back. I can't type on these things in here. Ooh, games. I wonder what we'll have. All right, so if I go to games. Looks like a lot of these are only accessible by bin. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip on over root. See what we have here again. Arithmetic doesn't sound like a game, it sounds like work. It's a hangman game. Monopoly. Okay, let's let's try hangman. Okay, so here are seven guesses. Um, oh, D. Oh, there's a D and an R. Ooh. R, R, D, and R, duh, I mean E. I guessed that, did I? T, R, T, P. I guessed that too. I blew it. What do you know? Determines. You know, it didn't, like, some of my vowels there. Must be I typed a control character in there. Well, either way, I'm hanging up on you. Goodbye. Let's do Monopoly. Good afternoon, Dave. I see you're going to play Monopoly. I, Hal 9000, will play with you. You can call me Hal. Oh, thank you, Paul Simon's evil friend. You're not Dave. Who are you? I am TJB Chris. Okay, how many people are going to play? Zero, other than me. Nah, I don't need to see the rules. Yes, I want free park bank money to go on to free parking. Okay, it's Hal's turn. Roll the two. Picked up Vermont. I landed on Baltic. Yes, I'll buy that. Now what's interesting about this is if you land on other stuff, it just keeps scrolling. So it's color just you got Marvin Gardens, Marv Gardens. Interesting. Penna Ave, and the railroad. Alright. Well, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I think stop will get me out of here. It will. Um, there's other other things. Each of these curated uh, Unix versions or Unix distributions and some of the other operating systems has a bunch of stuff specific to it, so the documentation really does kind of lead you to what has to be done and what's in each, so you can kind of play with it. I highly recommend it. Again, the website is linked in the description. There is a Microsoft Word document that serves as the manual for this. Um, all of the information is in there. A lot of it um, I haven't really found on the website, but I'll admit to not having looked too deeply after I found the Word doc. So once this gets done with its activity, I'll give it the reboot here, but I have sync going. Okay, I think we're pretty good now. Yeah, that pattern's pretty good. Oh. I'm going to hit that one more time. I'm going to shut those down. Yeah, go back. You're in single user. So it's going to boot idle lead. So like I said, you can set this up to program it um, through the front panel, just as you could 
Um, there's other operating systems that I've never used here. Um, RSX 11 and Plus, RT RSTS 7, RT 11. Uh, these are ones that I would like to play with and probably will. So that is it. That is the Pi P11. Uh, probably this machine will be featured in other videos as well. I said that about my Altair Arduino, and that will too. And my plan all along has been to use one of these machines, especially this Model 12, as the terminal for it. So now that I finally kind of got that functioning the way I want, hopefully I can do more with these machines and share it on YouTube. Until that happens, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.